Well, here we are. It is the summer, and during the summer months, you will see a lot of schooling activity across the lakes that we fish across America. And this is what this basically is, is a lot of bass and other species that will actually push bait fish to the surface where then they will start busting on them. And in this video, I really want to talk about three things that you can do to capitalize on this particular bite because you can really make things happen very quickly in a short window. And in this video, we're gonna talk about schoolers. Now, before we get into the video, this one's brought to you by my apparel company, Fin Fishing. I have, I think, just about 36 hours left of the Independence Day sale. This will end on July 7th, which is Sunday, tomorrow, if you guys are watching this the day that it launches. Everything on the website right now is 20% off, including the USA Made Sun shirts, my bass hat, including including this new color bass hat, this duck camo, which is probably one of my favorite ones. Um, everything, everything is 20% off except for the raw gloves. So if you guys would like to help support this channel, the best way to do so is by shopping at Finn. I will leave some links down below in the description. All right, let's talk about schooling activity, catching bass on uh, that are schoolers. Now, one thing that you should know is that I have seen in a, in a lot of different lakes apart, up across the country is that schoolers are not always worth chasing. And one of the biggest reasons is that sometimes, depending on you know what your kind of goal is when you go out there fishing, sometimes schoolers aren't always the biggest bass in the lake. Sometimes you will find a group of fish that are actively pushing bait, they're busting on them, you can see them with your own eyes. It's a really cool experience to see, but sometimes they're smaller fish. They're 12, 15, you know, smaller fish. Now, on the flip side, there are a lot of lakes out there where schoolers, you can have some really big fish that are schooling. And so you, you, whether it's small fish or big fish, these same things that I'm about to talk about, these three things can really apply, can help you to catch a lot more schooling fish. Now, the first thing that I wanna talk about, and this is probably the hardest thing to do when you're out there, but is do not cast until you see them bust. Like this is very, very hard. And some people may almost be against this, but if you are truly fishing for fish that are schooling, sometimes I have found over the years that it is almost not worth even casting until you start seeing these fish blow up. Because a lot of times you have very minimal amount of time. You have a few seconds to get on those fish hit those fish with a bait and, and those fish will commit to it. Now, if you are outside of that small window, if you miss that small window, you're not gonna get these fish to bite. It can be very difficult to catch schoolers at times. And so with that being said, if you had made a long cast and you're working your bait and they start blowing up over here, the amount of time it takes for you to reel that bait in as fast as you can and get it fired out to where they were just blowing up Sometimes it's too long and you are going to miss out on fish that if you had just sat there and waited for them to blow up, you would have been able to catch. So the, the big thing with this is that you just, you just kind of have to realize what the fish are doing. And, and what I mean by that is that there are lakes that I've been to. For example, I've been to lakes up in the northern part of the country where I run into schooling smallmouth that you can catch fish around areas just fishing, waiting for them to bust. But there are definitely lakes where it's it's literally, it's not even smart to cast until you see them busting. So you really kinda, I can't, I can't tell you what type of lake that there is. It just kinda comes down to the single fisheries. So just be cautious of that. If you realize that the fish that are busting are a lot bigger than the ones that you are just randomly catching, kinda casting all over the place, then don't even worry about casting. Just wait until they are busting. You also have to realize, is this something that's gonna happen all day is it, or is it a windowed period? Are they only schooling in the morning? Are they only schooling at high noon? Are they only schooling in the evening? These are all things that just require a little bit of time on the water with your certain fishery to understand what the fish are doing. And then once you kind of gather in that information, you can kind of then debate, okay, can I cast around and, and try to make uh, a couple of casts while waiting for these schoolers, or is it just better to sit there and wait? Now, like I said, for me, I found that the best thing to do is just sit there and wait. All right, let's talk about number two, tip number two, and that is top waters, top water baits are not always the best. Oftentimes, 
they are not always the best. Now, I say that because the first bait that we all pick up, myself included, is a topwater. Specifically, a lot of times it's a topwater walking style bait. That is the bait that a lot of us pick up when we see schooling fish. And guess what? It works from time to time, but I feel like I see more times than not that actual subsurface lures, lures that are just below the surface of the water will actually get more bites out there on the water when you have schooling activity. Now, again, this all comes down to experience, knowing the fishery that you are fishing, knowing what those fish are actually chasing after is another big thing. If the fish are feeding on four, five inch, you know, thread fin shot out there, and that's what they're pushing to the top, that's typically when your top waters are going to catch the big fish and the best fish because the top water that you're throwing, like most spooks, is four and five inches. So it really matches that bait fish. Now, in a lot of parts of the country, especially in the northern part of the country, you will see a lot of schooling activity on very small bait fish. I mean, one inch size bait fish, two inch size bait fish. Um, a lot of times these are just random minnows, whatever it may be. In that situation, again, a lot of us want to pick up a spook and we will catch some fish on a spook, but I find that you will catch way more fish on simply using some sort of subsurface lure. Now, there's a lot of different lures that you could use. One of the first that comes to mind is a fluke style bait. We all kind of know and love a soft plastic fluke. It can be really, really great. There's also some really good um, baits out there that are a little bit more unknown. Uh, for example, let me pull up this one right here. Actually, I got a couple. So right here is the Sabeel Swimmer. Um, this is a bait that it has a very natural action. If you live in the, the North Carolinas and South Carolinas where you have a lot of um, blueback herring in your lakes, like a Sabeel Swimmer is like a number one uh, bait that a lot of those guys pick up. It's still a good bait elsewhere in the country. And again, this is just a subsurface lure. It sits just below the surface. And I've seen a lot of days where that particular bait will get a lot more bites. Another one that's a little bit harder to find, but is a really good bait is this uh, Lucky Craft Wanderer. This is actually more of like a salt water bait. And it's kind of more of like a, a sinking pencil style bait where you cast this bait out, it actually sinks below surface, but a lot of times the best way to, to work this thing is basically you're just ripping it below the surface. I mean, it's it's just below the surface and you're just cranking this thing in. It's kind of scooting all over the place like this. It just looks like an injured bait fish or a bait fish that's trying to flee away. Really good saltwater bait also can be very, very, very good when it comes to bass, especially when you're chasing after bass that are eating some of those faster bait fish like the blueback herrings or maybe even alewife uh, in the northern part of the country. So that's a good little bait. Another really good bait um, that a lot of guys do know about is a spy bait. Um, a spy bait is, a, again, a subsurface lure um, that the thing that I really like about a spy bait when you are fishing around schooling fish is that if you get like a spin bait 80, like a G fix, for example, it weighs like a gram more than the typical spin bait 80s. Those things will cast literally a mile. Like you can cast a spin bait probably upwards of 50 yards, like 50, 60 yards. Like it can, you can launch that thing up there. The reason that I like that is it seems like you're never quite in position when those fish go up there and bust. So having a bait that you can launch out there at a very long cast and just start reeling as soon as it hits the surface, man, that you can catch a lot of big fish on a little spy bait um, throughout the entire year when it comes to schooling fish. So just remember your sub surface lures when it comes to fishing. Now, the second thing that I want to talk about when it comes, or sorry, the third thing when I, what I want to talk about when it comes to these schoolers is what to do when they stop schooling. And what I have found over the years is different than what I used to believe. What I used to believe back in the day is that fish would follow this big giant school of bait fish all across the lake. And that is somewhat true. But what I have found, especially with the use of my forward facing sonar, is that more times than not, there are bass in a general area. And it just happens that this school of bait fish swims over that area and it activates 
the bass. The bass go from kind of lingering on the bottom to all of a sudden they're shooting up, gathering the bait, pushing them to the surface where they're taking advantage of them. So with that being said, a lot of times these fish are going to expend a lot of energy very quickly, you know, in, in a little bit of time to try to catch the, that, the, that bait fish, to take it, to take advantage. I cannot talk today to take advantage of the opportunity that comes by when those bait fish are out of the area, by far the number one way to catch those same bass that are in that specific area is by dragging something very, very slow. You don't want to go out there. I, I think there's a lot of us that, you know, we think all oh, those fish are down. You want to throw a crankbait, maybe a swim bait. And I have seen time and time again, the best way to catch these fish is by really dragging something as slow as you can. And it can be a number of different things. It could be a drop shot, a, a shaky head, a Carolina rig is a great one. The biggest thing with this is to slow way down. Cause if you think about it, at least my theory is those fish expend a lot of energy trying to push those bait fish to the surface. When they come back down, what they're really doing is resting. They're just kind of sitting there. They're just kind of hanging out in that general area until the next group of bait comes by. And those fish don't tend to want to hit something fast and something moving. And so if you drag something very, I'm talking as slow as you can in those exact same areas where those fish were schooling, that seems to be the best way that I have had to actually catch those, that group of fish. So the, the way that this can be good, or the reason that this can be good is that sometimes you find areas of the lake that just have bigger average fish in them. And who doesn't want to go out there and catch big fish, whether you're a tournament fisherman or not. And so when you're in those areas and you have schoolers and you catch a couple, maybe on top waters, maybe on flukes, whatever it may be. And then all of a sudden, bam, they're done. I mean, pick up something as slow as you can to catch them. Now, it's very, very important to understand that you may have another group of bait fish come by. And so you kind of have to get intimate with these areas and understand them because like what I talked about in the first point, if you're fishing something uber slow on the bottom and, 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 and those fish, um, like all of a sudden a bait fish comes in the area, you're not gonna be in the position to cast one of those baits that we talked about at those, those fish to catch them. And so, gosh, I feel like I'm saying a lot right now, but it's just, there's so much that goes on. So in my mind, the, you have a lot of lakes in the country that these fish will school early and then they'll stop. Those are the best places where you can take advantage of them early and later in the day, drag something as slow as, as slow as you can, as slow as you can. That is, to me is the best way to catch them. All right. That's a mouthful. I feel like I still didn't explain it that well, but hopefully you guys understand. Please let me know down below if you picked up something. Also, if you want to check out the fin fishing deals, hit right here and I will see you guys tomorrow.